Hey, what's up, guys? We are back in again with one of the strongest decks in Clash Royale. If you guys haven't played this already, I don't know where you're living because this deck has been strong for so many years. And if you don't like this variation or you don't have Golden Knight, you can always run Electric Spirit instead. You consistently get split lane pressure with your rare recruits cycled in the back, with your zappies on both sides, and then when your opponent overcommits in one lane too much, you rail hogs in the other side and take a tower. Of course, you're going to have the extremely annoying Golden Knight to dash onto all of your opponent's units, so they have to pay attention to that, or the flying machine sneaking through to finish off towers in the last seconds. The Electric Spirit variation of this deck has been one of my favorite decks for years, and I think this one is a little bit better. So let's go jump straight at some games and assert dominance. I upload daily videos on the channel, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss out. And a huge thank you to everyone that's using Creator Code Sir Tag, making this channel possible. This guy's got a clan called Fun. We're going to make sure he doesn't have any of that today. None of that business, bro. So I'm going to split up the Zappies in the back, and you're going to Inferno Dragon. So when I see that, probably going to be a Mega Knight deck. Maybe it's going to be the Mega Knight, Ram Rider, Arch Queen deck that everyone is playing. And we're going to split up our Royal Recruits. So then your Mega Knight is going to be like, wait, where do I go? I see everything, but I don't know what to do. So the one Zappy in the right-hand lane is going to just keep perpetually resetting everything. And then I can go for a Goblin Cage here. Likely going to be able to go and snipe the Inferno Dragon with the Fly Machine and shut all this down. Unless he has Fireball, I think we're okay. You're not going to be able to stop the Fly Machine from shutting down the rest of your stuff, and we snag an early tower. That's what I'm talking about. This deck is so ridiculously dumb. Even if you play against someone that has a good counter, presumably, right? Like, a lot of people would be like, Jake, how are you supposed to beat someone that's got Mega Knight? The answer is, you literally just split your rare recruits, the Mega Knight can only be dropped on one side, and then their tower is going to inevitably drop right after. So I can go in for Royal Hogs, again with the Golden Knight if you want a Fireball, that's fine. The Golden Knight is just going to dash onto your tower because you have no way of stopping it anymore. <laughs> and now, look, your healthiest tower is lower than our lowest. Isn't that pitiful? That's how this deck does. It does everyone dirty. Oh, that fireball was filthy. Wow. I cannot believe that fireball came down in time. It didn't matter because his tower was in shambles on the left-hand side. But wow, it's more satisfying to make sure you get a clean 1-0 victory without them even taking a single tower. All right, so jumping into this one. This guy goes in for a Ram Rider. We're going to annihilate it so fast and furious with the Golden Knight and the Zappies. I love playing against Ram Rider decks because that means it's going to be P.E.K.K.A. And there's no chance that he has enough Elixir to accommodate both sides when the Royal Recruits come down. He's down a lot of Elixir right now, so I think I can even justifiably go for Recruits at the river. Usually, I would never make such an adventurous embark on the map, dropping all my Elixir in single early on. But this is one of those moments that I've just played against this deck so often that I know, hey, it's going to be hard for you to defend and look at all the damage I did. That's a thousand damage early on without that much units at all. Like, I didn't spend that much. And I can finish off the, the bandit, stop the real ghost, goblin cage on top of the archer queen. So if you want to go invisible, she's going to die. If you don't go invisible, she's going to die. You guys kind of get it by now. She's just going to die. <laughs> we're able to finish off the remainder with the golden knight too. So we'll probably get a P.E.K.K.A. And if a P.E.K.K.A. comes down into rare recruits, it's going to be a really bad decision for our opponent. So he's going to go for a ram rider instead, which, you know, I, uh, I applaud the play. I think that's a good decision. I'm not going to go and use the dash. It's just not worth it. Uh, I could use a Royal Hogs in the right-hand side, and we'll see what else we can do. Because we're going to accommodate both lanes at the same time. And usually, your opponent will go in for Electric Spear, and then a Royal Ghost, and a Bandit. And that's way too much Elixir, because that's 7 Elixir. And it doesn't even finish off the Royal Ghost instantaneously, right? Like, a Mega Knight is able to pop down, be real thick and stuff, and shut us down. But you guys already noticed that I got another 700 damage there. I got amazing counter pressure, and now I guess I'm going to take some damage from the, the Royal um, ghost coming down to the right-hand side, baiting out the elixir, so then I wasn't able to stop uh, the ram rider left, but, I mean, that's not that big of a consideration. That's not that bad. We can vibe with that. We're totally still in a great spot, and I think with the barb barrel out of cycle, he's gonna have a limited amount of answers to body block the golden knight, right? So, I think he might want to go for, like, a peck in the back, and, yeah, that's exactly what we were hoping for. Now he's gonna have to go for a bandit, and we can dash onto the bandit and the tower here. It's gonna hit everything. It's gonna stop the bandit's dash. That was hilarious. That was so broken. Golden Knight is just a way better version of Bandit. 
and the fact that the tower was targeting the Zappy too was really problematic for our opponent. If you guys didn't know, that is a glitch in the game right now, where it should still target the Golden Knight, but when the Golden Knight or the Bandit dash, then the tower retargets back onto something different. So that's one of the reasons why Golden Knight, I think, is by far the best champion in the game. Or actually, scratch that. It's literally just the best card. Why would I even lie to you guys for a second, you know? It's not just the best champion. It is fundamentally unfair on every single level. And you guys need to start playing it if you want to start playing the best champion. So we can Fireball on top of the Bandit if we needed to. But I think that's going to take Tower regardless. Like, the thing about Royal Hogs is if you don't have Fireball on Cycle and you don't have Mega Knight or Splash damage, they do so much more damage than a regular Hog Rider would. And you have to respond to them immediately or you're going to lose like half or all of your Tower. Hey, we got a game against Hajime. Is this actually the pro Hajime? I think it might be. So you know what? We're going to try our absolute hardest out here. And I've never done that before. But, you know, I'm going to focus up a lot more than I usually would. Usually, Hajime runs very aggressive decks or cycle-esque decks. So, we saw Log, we see Executioner, and maybe it's a graveyard deck. Maybe he's packing something different and spicy. I'm soaked for it. Let's go, man. So, if you're going to be running a, I would say, probably a Balloon deck. Or Hog Rider uh, Lightning or Hog Rider Rocket. It's going to be one of those. Yeah, I think it's going to be Hog Rider Rocket or Hog Rider Balloon. Or not Hog Rider Balloon, but Executioner Balloon. It's going to be one of those decks, though. What you going to do, my dude? So if you guys don't know Hajime, he's a pro player. He's one of the best players in the entire world. So I'm going to Goblin Cage here. We are able to stop the Hog Rider. The Goblins are able to get one hit on my tower. Not too bad. He's probably going to Tornado, so I want to go for Rail Hog so he's not able to Tornado this effectively to the King Tower. If he's got Rocket, I'm super sad, but I'd rather have it be in a situation where he doesn't get a King Tower activation with the Tornado. So I was like, ah, uh, probably the right play, you know? Even though it's not necessarily the cleanest play, it is the right decision. Are you sure about that? A few inches later. I could have split rail hogs, actually. Hmm. I wonder if that would have been slightly better. It is what it is. I'm just giving this guy a lot of respect because he is one of the best players in the entire world. So, we're going to go and split up our zappies and we'll see what else we can do here. He's going to go in for the Valkyrie in the back. If I go in for rail recruits and I do this, and then I go in for a Golden Knight in the right-hand side, can we break through an Executioner and Goblins? Because the Valkyrie is out of cycle. I think this would be our best bet. Uh, we'll see how well this works. So I'm going to go for the Golden Knight ability after we see what he wants to do. If you want a Hog Rider, I'm not going to go and use my Golden Knight dash on that. I think that would be a bad decision. We're going to wait, and then we're going to use our Golden Knight dash on top of the Executioner and the tower there. So I waited. I got a better opportunity. I finished off the Executioner, and I don't get the hit. But that is as good as it could have been for me, all things considered. Oh, he missed the log. This didn't matter. No, no, it didn't matter. He didn't really miss it. He knew that he wasn't going to hit the uh, Barbarian anyway. He didn't need to hit the Barbarian. Makes sense. I'm going to Fireball here. You're going to go in for a Tornado. I think I get a couple hits. I don't know how worth that is, but I'll take the damage that I can get. And I will split my Zappies in the back. Okay, Executioner. You're going to go in for a Hog Rider. I feel it. I know it. I sense it. I know it's coming down, bro. I'm ready for it. I'm going to Hog Rider counter with a Cage, and then I'm going to go in for a Golden Knight here, and then maybe even go in for this. Yo, he missed the Rocket. Yo, Hajime. Oh, no, no, no. That is not good for him. That is a no bueno situation. The fact that he wasn't able to hit anything with the rocket is ridiculous, right? That seems to be very good for me. Okay. I still don't win the game off of this, but this is quite good. I do say so myself. So the Valkyrie's going to die. I can go in for a Goblin Cage here. We are able to kill the Hog Rider. I don't think he's going to be able to break through unless he tornadoes. I don't think that that, that would even come down from him, though. Because if he tornadoes, then he's going to be down a lot of Elixir. Okay, are we going to be able to go Golden Knight in the right-hand side, or do we want to follow up with a Fly Machine here? I think Fly Machine is slightly better, and then Golden Knight afterward, after he decides to go for Valkyrie. The Valkyrie comes down. We are able to kill it quite quickly. We Barb real quick, and then go in for a Golden Knight ability, finish off the Goblins, and then go in for Royal Hogs. That would be pretty nice. Yo, the Golden Knight got under the tower! Am I able to beat one of the best players in the entire world? That would be ridiculous if I was able to beat someone ten times better than me. I don't think the Goblin Cage is going to be able to finish that off. I'm going to eat a lot of damage, then I'm going to Fireball here if I want to. I don't know if this is the right decision. It probably isn't. I'm not going to be able to get any damage from that, am I? Oh, I messed up. I shouldn't have Fireballed. If I hadn't Fireballed, I think I would have won the game. But now I overcommitted, and I don't have Elixir to stop the Hog in time. And he should be able to go in for a Rocket and Log and win. It was predictable. So Hajime is one of the best players in the entire world. If you guys haven't seen him before, I'll show his profile after. <laughs> he is a lot better than me. And it was a close game. I just shot a fireball there, and maybe I would have won. It is uh, 
one of those situations that all I needed was one more good Golden Knight hit, and then one more Royal Hog touching the tower, and then two Fireballs, and I would have won the game. So it's just like one good push, and I would have won that one. GG and well played to Hajime. So if you guys don't know who Hajime is, he finished number one in the world, as you guys can see on this profile, <laughs> as his best finish. And look at all the 20 wins and top trophy finishes. Literally one of the best players in the entire world for a reason, and it was a really close game. So jumping into this game, we're going to go and cycle Zappies in the back, and this guy goes in for a Dark Prince on top of the Zappies. A very peculiar and interesting play. You would not want to drop something that gets stunned, and the Prince's charge is then stifled, so I, I'm just not used to seeing that. Oh, Double Witches. Wait, can I fireball everything? Are you kidding me? The most profound value you've ever seen! And we push the witch the other side. She doesn't even know which way to go. What you doing, witch? You've got two witches, but you still can't tell which direction to go. That is hilarious. So the only thing that I don't like is the fact that she's able to cycle so many skeletons to body block, but the log was peculiar as well. So in this situation, I'm going to Golden Knight in the left, and then I'm going to go in for Royal Hogs in the right. Because I'm not a huge fan of sacrificing my Royal Hogs into things that do a lot of splash damage, like the Dark Prince and the Executioner. You're going to have to drop something up high so that you didn't let the Golden Knight lock onto your tower there with its ability. So I realized that. I'm like, okay, let me drop a Dark Prince or Skeletons or something at least. Bare minimum. And if you do that, you're going to be down so much Elixir for the Rail Hogs to get damage. So he's put himself in a peculiar position where he cannot afford to eat any more damage on either side now. Because I've got Rail Recruits on Rail Hogs, I have the masterful deck that can split push no matter what side you have. If it's weak, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So I'm going to go and split recruits. I'm going to be able to apply aggression to the left and defend in the right. And I think that it's going to be still tough for me to defend a double witch deck. I know that it's going to be a probable witch or him just completely ignoring everything. Those are the two options that he has at his disposal. And yeah, it looks like he's just going to ignore everything after he drops a log. You know, that's not a really a good decision. The Dark Prince got pulled back. That's hilarious. We can Barbrill here and then Zappies afterwards. As long as the bats die, I don't think this, this is too undesirable for me. Because the gold death damage got minimized to an extent that it's just completely insignificant. Unless you're running clone. Then you kind of have to get worried about it a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. Put a fireball on top of the witch. Maybe we can snipe that really quickly. If we are, that's awesome. Look at that. Now all he has is a golem. That's literally all he has on the right hand side. No witch to stop the piggies. The piggies are parading on the tower. They have all the power and they are inevitable. With 23 seconds remaining and an executioner dark prince coming at me, there's no way for him to break through. There's simply no way for him to win. And even if he broke through, he would just lose the game because I would be able to go in for real hogs on the right hand side and then take the tower where that is barely at any health points left over. Pretty fun game. I enjoyed it a lot. And you know what? We'll bounce on our next one and see what else we can do. Oh, wait. Is that not... Oh. Come on. We thought that was an easy W, but at least we get to show you guys that I'm a man of my word. Those Royal Hogs put in the pain and the suffering. They do a ton of damage, and it's pretty absurd how much value you can get from those. So I can Fireball again just to get even more value. I can Golden Knight afterward if I want to. It's pretty ridiculous how much value you can get with the constant aggression of this deck. He's going to go in for the Golem, and that is the saddest Golem I've ever seen. So at this point, we're just going to cycle the Fireball and win. Or maybe the Golden Knight's going to dash. Oh my gosh. That's broken. That's pretty unfair. <laughs> Who needs a fireball cycle if you can just chain on to everything with the Golden Knight? He literally chained on to five different cards and won me the game. That shouldn't happen in Clash Royale, but I, okay. If you want to give me an unbalanced mechanic to win, I'll take it. Hey, yo. On to the next one, the Dragon Slayer. Luckily for you, we don't have a single dragon. So you're just not going to be on duty today, bro. You could just leave the game, you know? If that's your one job in Clash Royale is to slay all the Electric Dragons, Baby Dragons, and all the other skeleton dragons that were already killed, you don't have much of a job in this game, do you? We're going to split our recruits and split up your attention and then conquer you. Wow. Double Prince and Arrayal Recruits with Zappies? This must be the saddest matchup you have ever seen in the entirety of Clash Royale. How are you supposed to win this game right now? First off, you don't have Dark Prince because the Dark Prince is out of cycle. Second off, every single chance that you fireball on top of the Royal Hogs, which... Yeah, Fireball is supposed to be a counter, right? Like you guys all think that Fireball is a counter Royal Hog. Tell that to the tons of damage that I just got on him. Okay, he's good enough to activate King Tower with the Goblin, or not the Goblins, the Guards. Sometimes I mix those up for no reason. I'm sorry, Guards. You're a little bit more refined. You cost three Elixir instead of two. You've also got those fancy helmets. 
You know what? I if I could steal one costume out of Clash Royale, well, I wouldn't say guards because they're kind of naked, right? Like I don't, I don't know, it'd be a little bit too risky, but. I do like the guards' shields, and I really like their helmets. Let me know down below in the comments section what costume you would take if you could have anything from Clash Royale. And do not say Harry Potter, because you guys are not allowed to go to Hogwarts. It is too magical out there. It's way too magical of an experience. All right, I'm going to follow up with Royal Hogs as soon as I can. I think that Bar Brewing on top of the Dark Prince and the Spear Goblins is ideal, so then we can get some more tank going. And then also finishing off the Spear Goblins allows our units to survive longer. I don't think he's gonna have anything besides fireball and then regular prince and then the zappies are still able to tickle the tower the zappies tickling the tower oh please don't reset on the right one. Oh come on man why do i have to curse myself like that if it just kept hitting the left zappy we would have just got so much extra damage because it would have just been a stunning cycle of spam that's fun to do that all right i think he cycles something in the back so i'm gonna golden knight and royal hogs at that exact moment he does not but i might be able to dash onto the tower wow look at that it dashed onto the tower that's insane so much damage so I can recruit again if I want to, or do I go in for a cage? I think a cage, and then I follow up with Barbrill to finish off the Zappies uh, stuff that's going to get countered. Golden Knight afterward, kill the Spear Goblin. We've got the Golden Knight counter pushing. Even though he did pretty well there, I don't know if it's enough, right? Like, you're, you're going to go in for a Dark Prince that will probably die to the Golden Knight. And if it does, then the Fly Machine's going to put in enough work. Oh my gosh, you're aggressive. Wow, you're feisty. You're dropping both princes at the river. The brothers are going to die together, I guess. It's <laughs> just how it's meant to be. Are we able to split everything up? He's going to fireball, but he's not going to be able to hit the flying machine. No way. That's broken. Oh, I forgot about bats. The only bad thing about our deck, and I'm going to say this with a straight face because it's kind of unfortunate, is we do not have Electro Spirit. I want to kill those bats so bad. That's the only reason why I think that Golden Knight could be sometimes worse is if your opponent has bats in every other matchup. Golden Knight reigns supreme for the ultimate meme. He's able to get a lot more damage, force out elixir from your, from your opponent in more uncomfortable situations. And he's going to fireball on that. Okay. You can go in for recruits afterward immediately. The Zappy stays alive. I'm able to afford the cage. Oh, yes. If I didn't afford the cage there, I think I would have lost the game. He has to zap on top of the recruits on the left-hand side, but that's not enough, dude. That's definitely not enough. You're still taking way more damage. Ooh, we can start to go opposite lane aggression. This is way better for us, because now we can ignore the Dark Prince that he drops. <laughs> well, I mean, I can definitely ignore that one if it's going to the wrong side. Let's go, baby. Wait, why is it going back? Why is it going back? What's wrong with that Dark Prince? He's the most indecisive. Sir, he went left, he went right. He's just like, I don't know where to go anymore. I'm a lost puppy. He's a lost pupper. So I think we can go in for the ability, but that would be too much elixir. I'd rather go for a bar build to finish off the Spear Goblins anyway. And then Dark Prince is out of cycle, so he's going to Fireball. Do I go and split Royal Hogs and then I get, uh, you know, my win condition on both sides? I think that's a lot better. Fly Machine off to the side after he decides to Fireball on one side. Or are you not going to You're going to Fireball on two piggies. Let's go. That's, <laughs> that is literally the best trade I could have ever asked for. And then we can go in for a Goblin Cage. Oh my gosh, I missed it. I literally missed it. Maybe it's better than I missed it. Yo, it's actually better than I missed it. Because if it was dead, I would probably lose the game. <laughs> so we're not going to talk about how bad that was. It was terrible, but it was good. It was so bad that it was good. <laughs> That's awesome. The more you know, when you guys play terribly, it was all completely calculated. That's what you have to tell yourselves. If you ever make a mistake, it's never a mistake. It was you bringing out your inner pro player, never letting you make the misplay that you uh, that you thought you would make. Okay, I need to go for Zappies here in case he fireballs or something. I'm going to drop him a little bit later. Um, and then we can go in for the ability and just stop everything that's tracks with the Goblin Cage. With five seconds remaining, he's just watching a timer tick down. He's like, wow, this is the worst cooking experience I've ever had in my life. This loss tasted terribly. I'm sorry, man. That oven went off and you lost the tower. GG, well played, and peace out. This video was so much fun. And if you guys enjoyed it as much as I did, make sure to let me know by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content just like this and have an amazing rest of your day.